So, epigenetics is the study of changes in an organism, organism caused by modification of gene expression rather than actual changing of the genetic code. So, it's a change in phenotype without a change in genotype. And although there's no actual change to the genes, it can still be heritable. And it occurs naturally, but there are several factors that uh, influence sort of like how much it occurs, how little it occurs, how frequently it occurs, so like age, the environment that you live in, the things you're exposed to, disease state. And there are three main types of epigenetic influences that we'll talk about. The first one being uh, DNI methylation, which is key in silencing of transcription. And it involves uh, a covalent transfer of a methyl group to the C5 position of a cytosine in a CPG island. Um, the next one is histone modification. Um, I remember, I think I did a video on this last year about um, acetylation. And that's about histone modification. So um, it, control, it results in the control of the chromatin around histone so how tight or how loose the chromatins wound around it due to acetylation and it this means that it can either hide or release hide away sort of like transcription factors so transcription doesn't occur or it can loosen the dna enough so that transcription factors are available and transcription can occur uh, the final type of epigenetic influence is the influence of non-coding rnas so um, these are RNAs which don't result in a uh, code, so they don't code for proteins. Um, some examples are SI RNAs, which are small interferon RNAs, and they control uh, transcription regulation and influence gene silencing. Uh, these three epigenetic influences are very important in development as the silencing of particular genes or copies of particular genes is a normal process in development. So, um, by silencing genes, it allows sort of differentiation. So it allows sort of the formation of brain cells and then stomach cells and not all cells being the same thing because certain genes are switched off or switched on in different areas. So it results in different cells. However, it is susceptible to dysregulation throughout life and it's very susceptible and vulnerable during embryogenesis. Uh, following fertilization, most methylation patterns are actually erased and then re-established, but imprinting persists throughout the methylation profile of a parent of orange. And here's just a little example of the potential windows of vulnerability. So there are um, multiple periods during which environmental exposure could affect the F1 generation's methylation status, uh, potentially affecting the F1 phenotype. The first window is during the F0 stage, which is the parental germline cell development when methylation is reprogrammed following imprinting uh, with the father's sperm, which is the blue line, um, and the mum's egg, which is the red line. Uh, the second window is post-conception, so this sort of F1 stage, um, and it's sort of embryonic development when the imprinted genes are demethylated uh, with the male germline uh, demethylating more quickly, which is the blue dotted line, uh, that followed by the female, which is the red dotted line. So the female demethylated slower. Uh, imprinted genes which is the purple line, uh, maintain their methylation marks throughout this reprogramming and allowing for the inheritance of parental-specific monoallelic expression um, throughout all of adulthood. All the imprinted genes are su subsequently remethylated once the embryo reaches the early blastocyte stage. Uh, during the during the, the sex determination stage of the embryonic development, the primordial germ cells undergo epigenetic reprogramming where parental imp imprinting is erased as the, as the germ cells of the F1 individual mature. So that's the solid blue lines there. 